could sit in this room for 300 years and I would never get up one morning and say, I wonder what the role of poetry is in America. Um, well, up, up, I could frame it this way. When I, when I was poet laureate, one thing that happens is you get interviewed to death. You know, I, I thought I was going to be the first Christian martyr to actually be interviewed to death. Um, and the two most popular questions I got were, um, how do you account for this incredible renaissance in American poetry with MFA programs and readings and this and that? And the second question was, how come nobody reads poetry anymore? So <laughs> there was actually a way of answering these two questions, and that way was, yeah, you're right, there is a lot of poetry activity going on, you know, magazines, poetry contests, uh, MFA programs, readings, open mic readings, um, performance poetry, but uh, the audience is so small because most of the people in, who are indulging in these activities are poets. It's sort of a close, so the, the, the circle of poetry is broadening in terms of sheer numbers and participants, but the but it's a it's a close it's a closed system. It would be like I mean if you go to a poetry reading, I would say most people in the audience want to be poets or or they are already, and it would be like going to the ballet and everyone's wearing leotards in the audience, you know. Um, so that's the good news and the bad news. There's much more poetry activity, but uh, it's not generally getting out to a broader a public. Everybody wants to express themselves. And poetry seems to be a very accessible way to do that because it suggests that you don't need training. Well, would you go up and grab a, I, I presume you don't play the bassoon, but nor do I, and I don't think either of us would just grab a bassoon and start trying to blow into it. Um, but without any training whatsoever, people will pick up a, a ballpoint pen and a piece of paper and start expressing themselves.